And then presenters, if you want to introduce yourself, um, we'll start with Barbara. If you just want to introduce yourself, um, your, your name, your job or your career, um, where you worked or where you did work, and we'll just start, we'll just start there. Okay, uh, I'm Barbara Lugi. I'm a, a retired director of athletics at Johnson State College. And in my retirement, I have decided to join the workforce a bit in a fun job that I'm a, a currently a bike tour leader uh, that I lead tours within the United States. Thanks so much, Barbara. And Jen Cirillo. Hi everybody, I'm Jen Cirillo. I use uh, she, her pronouns and I work at Shelburne Farms in Vermont as the Director of Professional Learning. Um, and I'll talk more about that later. Great, thanks Jen. And Eric Strickler. You got it, Tiffany. Uh, hello, friends. And from what I can see, Kendra, Alex, Caden Carter, and Andrew. Um, I, uh, I work leading trips outside with uh, the North Carolina Outward Bound School and also with the National Outdoor Leadership School. And so I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but kind of like long wilderness expeditions, backpacking and climbing and whitewater kayaking and amongst other things. Great, thanks Erica or Eric. Um, so if we want to start with just some questions, so um, if you all have questions, you can go ahead and ask them. And then if there's particular questions that you have for um, the presenters, you can do so. Otherwise, you can, you know, ask a question and then the presenters, you know, that um, it seems most relevant to answer can, can do that. So they did have a, a personal question for you, Eric, uh, Eric um, regarding whether or not you know Josh Hardett. I see that. Uh, I do not. I'm sorry. I'm sure Josh is pretty cool because whatever that is, Moose, Moose a la Moo sounds, sounds fun. Moose la Moo. <laughs> it's a wilderness area. Oh, okay. Um, in gotcha. Vermont. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm based more down in North Carolina uh, and have done work out in Seattle in the Pacific Northwest. So. Great. Not as much as I would like in Vermont. Okay, so why don't we do this? Why don't we just have like Barbara, er, um, Jen Cirillo, and then Eric Strickler just sort of give like a brief introduction to your career um, pathway and what brought you to that pathway, um, some of the skills that you might use, um, and you know any other sort of relevant information that might help these students think about whether or not this is a good um, career pathway for themselves. So we can start maybe this time with Jen. Sure. Um, this morning, I was thinking about uh, presenting to you all. And I don't know any of you. So I'm looking at the list of names. And I don't think I know any of you. Um, and if you've been at Shelburne Farms, I may have been one of your instructors. But if I were to think back what my career pathway is, I would not have imagined um, working at Shelburne Farms um, or being really a sustainability and environmental educator. Um, I found my first grade book. I don't know if you can't really see it because of my background, but when I, um, I wrote about what I wanted to be when I grew up, as did all of my peers in first grade. And I think there was only one person who actually is doing what she said she wanted to do when she was seven. Um, she's a doctor and she said she wanted to be a doctor when she was seven. But I wanted to be a horseback rider, a professional horseback rider and a princess. I am neither of those things. Um, my career path was really varied. I actually started off um, going to business school at the University of Vermont. And within my first semester, I actually switched into environmental studies and plant and soil science. And before going to graduate school, I worked for the city of Burlington um, with the AmeriCorps VISTA program. And that was a great way for me to explore, um, you know, different career pathways and different opportunities. 
and I ended up um, getting interested in education. So I went back to school um, and I ended up with a master's in environmental education um, through the Audubon Expedition Institute. And so, you know, probably similar to Eric, the kind of work that Eric does in outdoor education, um, like Knowles, the program was all outside. Um, and I got to experience different parts of the world. I lived in Mexico, I lived in Canada, and um, I lived in Italy. And with my combination of my background in environmental education and agriculture, I was able to um, come back to Vermont and find a job at Shelburne Farms. Uh, but again, I would never have really planned. That wasn't my pathway that I had planned. Um, and maybe in my retirement, I'll become a horseback riding princess, getting back to my seven-year-old desires. Thanks so much, Jen. Um, so Eric, how about yourself? What brought you to your career field? And um, you know, what, what skills do you use? And, and what was your educational pathway? Well, okay, I've been taking some uh, some notes from Jen's presentation. Um, I think um, overall, so I work in the in the outdoors now, leading trips anywhere from like two two days to twenty two days, um, and also teaching uh, wilderness medicine classes. And so um, that's more like just for a day, but like hands on medicine with uh, with people. Um, and can be done in the classroom, but is always best done outside. So I really just love spending that time outside and being in outdoor environments. And I was thinking about uh, what got me really inspired to do that. And I think it's just that the outdoor environment for me always had something else to explore and something else to be curious about. Um, and another like insect to check out or, you know, I mean, soils to dig up, maybe, Jen, um, and you got like clay and sand and I don't know, crazy looking rocks. And I can't tell you how many rock collections I had as a kid and then have subsequently like thrown out, but some of them I've kept. Um, anyways, I remember doing a career uh, survey in college and the career counselor said like, I think you want to be a farmer. Like that's, that's what it looks like. And I was like, I don't know if I want to be a farmer. Uh, but the take home was like, I just wanted to be outside using my body and like being engaged in the environment. Um, and so throughout college, uh, I did that through getting involved in some activity groups. Uh, I was part of a sea kayaking club, a rock climbing club. Um, and I volunteered at a number of nature centers um, that just gave me more exposure and kind of learning outside of the classroom. And then an opportunity to like teach other people, which I found was super fun for me. Um, and I also was studying Spanish and like that additional language has come in valuable for me uh, a few times, not as many as I thought it may have, but um, I'd like to get back to improving that skill. Um, and so when I got into college, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to study, but I was kind of like, um, the, my, uh, my steering wheel kind of oriented me towards more like the natural sciences and things. And then just continued to get involved in university groups from there, um, leading backpacking trips with the backpacking club. Um, and then through that, I just like met people and was kind of doing what I enjoyed. Um, I worked in a few laboratories in college doing natural science work. And I realized that I thought it was super interesting, all the science behind the natural world, but I was not the kind of person that was gonna sit in a lab and analyze data and, and put it on a computer screen. So I decided that I would play a different role in that and educate um, you know, younger people about the sciences and kind of inspire them to be uh, interested in that kind of stuff. So that's how I, I ended up working out um, around Seattle at one of the national parks at Mount Rainier National Park. And, um, you know, those are jobs that are open to a lot of people that um, have some basic studies in biology um, and the natural sciences. 
And I did that for about a year. And then similar to Jen, I worked in an AmeriCorps program doing some environmental restoration. So kind of caring for public spaces and public parks. Um, and I think part of the motivation of that came from how much I enjoyed spending time outdoors and whether it's like playing soccer in a public park or exploring the nooks and crannies and trees and stuff like that. Um, and then I just kind of kept going with it and, and getting involved in that community and um, did some education on a sailboat uh, for marine science out in the West Coast and then subsequently decided I wanted to start leading longer backpacking trips and getting more into the technical side of rock climbing and teaching people um, kind of like life, you know, life skills out on these outward bound expeditions where you're having to like really focus on the task that's at hand and figure out how you're going to um, overcome a challenge that's in front of you and you have a group of other people with you and how are you going to use them to operate safely in a challenging environment. Um, so I look that was a little rambly but I hope I answered a number of those questions and I'm going to mute my microphone right now <laughs> if you don't have anything else for me Tiffany. <laughs> Thanks so much Eric. Um, yeah it's interesting just to think that even though I'm the moderator, you know, I think we've all had similar experiences of um, being involved with AmeriCorps, which is a great opportunity for students who want to sort of get some hands-on experience in their career pathway or their chosen field. So thanks for that tip. Um, so Barbara, how about yourself? Well, um... Yeah, where do I begin after those two nice intros? Uh, <laughs> I uh, was born um, up in the Northeast Kingdom and, and um, came off um, early stages of a dairy farmer. So um, my original path, I would say, uh, was leading, I wasn't sure. Um, I was a first generation. Uh, none of uh, anyone in my family had ever gone to college uh, in any of the generations. So. Um, I was a little bit fortunate uh, enough to um, get a basketball scholarship to uh, to go to college. So uh, it really led started my path. Uh, I had a family when I arrived kind of at college. And uh, so with having that opportunity, it, it, it really gave me that lane um, of where I ended up being a college athletic director in at that time, there were a lot of options for, for females back when I went to college because Title IX was coming out and et cetera. But my heart really wanted to come back to Vermont knowing that I believe it here in the state, there are a lot of um, you know students like myself who um, were really lost about the, the, the college experience and opportunity and how do I get to there. So when the job uh, came open at Johnson State, I had applied um, to be able to come back and um, had 20 plus glorious years as the director of athletics and recreation. And so it really uh, exposed me and gave me the opportunity to be with many, many, many students uh, at that smaller college level and to help and assist. And um, so, yeah, it's kind of the education path in, in athletics. And then from there, um, you know, getting started early in my career, uh, I was only 24. So it gave me an opportunity to put in many, many years. And then I loved the job, but uh, got sick. And so I uh, decided to leave the job. And um, so it came about as a little bit of early retirement, but obviously in my mind too young to retire, but where did I want to begin there in my early 50s? So I decided and was contacted by a bicycle tour company by an alumni of Johnson State College who had observed me over the years and asked me to come and join uh, her business. And so for the last eight years, I've been leading bike tours all over uh, the United States. So it's again, kind of a little bit of a opportunity to meet people, uh, be in the outdoors, also have the chance to do some, you know, physical activity still. and. Every day is a different day and a new day. So, <laughs> so yeah. So my paths kind of just, I've been fortunate enough to, they keep taking me and I keep jumping on and enjoying it for sure. <laughs> 
So Barbara, um, there was just a question about what type of um, bike tours you lead. Uh, so uh, I, it's uh, road bikes or hybrids. So yeah. And they're typically um, week long uh, adventures with all inclusive. And, and so we, yeah. So as myself and there would be another guide and we just um, kind of be the teacher of the week. We maintain, you know, the safety and are there for our guests and we know our regions, um, you know, and so just, it's kind of like a great vacation job for me and meeting new people. <laughs> Great, thank you. It's so it's so interesting just to think that like once you um, your career is over, there's other things that you can continue to do, um, and that both of the things that you've chosen to do really are based on your interests and and your skills. Um, so, I was wondering, Barbara, real quick before we go on to other questions, what was your college major? Uh, I majored in education and psychology counseling were, were my two uh, primary um, interests uh, that I did get degrees in uh, for my undergraduate. Great. Thanks so much. So students, now that you sort of have like a good sense of um, the presenters, if there are questions that you have specifically for, you know, any one of them, feel free to add in the chat. Um, and to just to give you a little bit of time to think about those questions, I'm going to just pose another question to our um, presenters. And that is, um, so thinking about the four C's or the skills that all, you know, people need in edu to be successful in education and with employment, um, and maybe specifically speaking to like creativity and critical thinking. Could you just share a little bit about how you might use those skills in your in your job? So this time we'll start with Eric. Okay. Unless okay, I was gonna say, Eric, if if I put you on the spot and you need a little bit of time, feel free to I mean, you gotta, you know, gotta be able to come up with something. Um creativity. Um okay. So uh, I think for, for instance, when I'm teaching uh, wilderness medicine, um, we do a lot of, we'll teach concepts of how you deal with like a broken, a broken bone or how you deal with like a bloody laceration on your, um, on your arm or how you deal with um, head trauma if you get hit in the, you get hit in the head really hard and we do that through um, making up scenarios kind of like acting scenarios where an injury has happened to somebody um, and then our team of people that we're training these wilderness medicine students have to go and take care of this person and figure out how what the best way to care for them um, in a wild environment would be um, if that were to occur to them and so we can get pretty creative with those scenarios and like how how we like create a situation where somebody uh, gets hurt. I don't want to say I'm like really good at thinking up situations of like how people get, could get hurt, but I'll give you a little insight into I have to teach a class this weekend for Halloween and I'm thinking there's going to be some costumes involved and there's going to be a bird and the bird's going to drop something on somebody's head and they're gonna have a head injury and our students are gonna to have to go like figure out how to take care of this person. So it's never the same day as long as, um, as, long as I'm engaged and I'm energized and I can think of new ways to, um, to present things. And uh, I think that's fun. And it, it also engages my critical thinking of like, okay, how am I gonna paint this situation such that somebody is actually gonna get something out of it. Like, okay, it's kind of a funny, uh, funny scenario that we have to pose, but like we were wanting to teach a real concept of like, what do you do if you think somebody's spine might be hurt or they might've had a concussion. Um, and so I have to kind of like weave that in there in how I, how I present topics. Um, and I think any, any topic that I end up teaching forces me to think critically about how I can best get people to learn the main points that I'm trying to get across. Thanks so much. Um, 
So Barbara, how about yourself? How do you use critical thinking and creativity um, either in your prior role or in your current role? Uh, well, I would say in my past role, uh, being uh, creative or, um, <laughs> as you know, a college athletic director, there's many balls that you're, you're juggling. Uh, either you got games on the road or some that are home and you can't control the weather or <laughs> uh, many things. So it's, I think you just um, are kind of always, always on and uh, no, no day is the same. And so, you know, I think you just kind of have the foundation of what you're trying to do and which is to um, enable and organize sports and so that students have the best uh, chance of, of play and safety and opportunity. And at the same time, make it creative where it's not just, playing the sport. So there were a lot of uh, involvements and activities that I did uh, with our teams outside of the sport teams, for example, and being creative, we, I'm a firm believer in the holistic approach. And so when teams were either in season or out of season, uh, I did some examples uh, like readers as role models. So on every Friday, uh, our team in season, the teams that were in season, we would go around to the local high schools on Fridays and we would read to the kindergarten, first, second grade uh, classes. Um, during the holidays, uh, oftentimes, because I, I, we all know at some point we're gonna get older. None of us are, of course, we're still in our teens, but. Uh, um, we went to the different uh, elderly homes. Uh, so at Halloween, we carved pumpkins. At, at Christmas, we put up their decorations and trees. Uh, in the spring, we, you know, uh, decorated Easter eggs just so that I, I felt that so our students could get the opportunity to, to give back, A, one, but at the same time experience or be exposed to possibly in that setting, you know, the younger generation and the older generation. And uh, so that was part of creativity, not just being all about sports and, and such. Um, so yeah, I, I don't want to be too wordy or lengthy and take up time. So hopefully that just added a little bit for you. Yeah, that's great, Barbara. It's, you know, I think it's sometimes when we think of creativity, we think that like, oh, I'm not creative, like I can't draw or I can't write. But Creative creativity can also just be in the way that you think or in the way that you problem solve or um, in the ideas that, that you come up with. So I think you, your examples were, were really great. And Jen, you know, knowing you and that you are an extremely creative individual, I'm just curious um, if you could just share a little bit about um, how you use creativity and um, critical thinking in, in your role with Shelburne Farm. Yeah, um, you know, building off of what Barbara and Eric already said, I, I guess I think of creativity in, in a couple of ways. One, I think about it as a, um, like something we do. So it could be something um, when I work with schools that I want students and, and classroom teachers to be creative. So we'll set up some kind of way for them to integrate the arts and it might be dramatic arts or it could be visual arts. So it's like kind of a something a practice that I do is to be creative and then when I think about um, the environment and social justice I think about it as a like a process or a way of viewing the world is to be creative or to have a different perspective on something because it helps us problem solve and it helps us address problems in a different and unique way and then I sometimes think about it as a um, you know, not so much like outward facing, but inward facing for me to, for me to be reflective and for me to, to think differently about my own work. Um, and so I might, you know, for instance, um, I'm also in a PhD program and I'm trying to write a dissertation proposal, which sounds pretty straightforward, you know, and your teachers might ask you to say, can you write a 10 page paper on something? Well, in order for me to do that, I um, wrote a comic of my proposal in three panels. So you can't really see it, but the detail, but I, I had to think differently. I was really stuck. And so sometimes in my work and in my, my personal work and my professional work, I'll use that idea of creativity or that, um, that some of the tools um, to think differently. So um, yeah, there's a lot of 
ways that creativity, creativity and critical thinking come into environmental um, and sustainability work because it's, it's a mindset too. Thank you so much. That was, that's great. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's any questions um, that that was in here. It seems like for a lot of the participants that the career fields are really resonating with you and that you're you're taking a lot of interest in in what the presenters are sharing, which is awesome. You know, that per, perhaps could give you some insight into this potentially being a pathway that you want to explore a little a little deeper. Um, and asking specific questions of people who are in the field that you're interested in um, can really help you, you know, narrow down your choices. So, you know, as you're listening, really think about what questions might you have for them that could help you figure out if you want to be a wilderness instructor, or if you want to be an athletic coach, or, you know, if you want to work in environmental or sustainability education. Um, so, you know, I think one of the other things, one of, it's not a 4C, but it's also a really important skill is flexibility. Um, and so just thinking about, you know, flexibility, if you guys could just share a little bit about how your job might allow for flexibility um, and, you know, what are some of sort of the benefits that, that your job afforded you um, in this field? And I think this time we'll start with Barbara. We're just rotating through. Uh, sure, flexibility, absolutely. Uh, as an athletic director, um, you know, I, I, as I said a couple of times, I think already, every day is different, uh, so it's not set. Uh, so uh, it enabled me an opportunity. I was at my desk for a while, uh, taking care of some administrative stuff, but I was uh, very opposed to, um, I was always outside or inside and in, in at every one of our home contests. So it gave me the flexibility of moving around, um, meeting parents, meeting families, uh, meeting, you know, uh, prospective students who come on, on campus. Um, it also, I think the community itself being on a campus at large, having so many other um, ways to uh, visualize with my student athletes. You know, I oftentimes went to the different um, theater, uh, the plays that went on or the concerts just to see, uh, you know, my athletes in a different setting. Um, so um, having that freedom to kind of roam, uh, it's one of those jobs where as long as you get the administrative piece done where you need to, to be kind of at your desk, uh, it really has a tremendous amount of flexibility because um, you, you get to constantly be moving. Uh, so it's a, a job, not a faint of heart. Uh, you go through many pairs of uh, sneakers running all around and, and, and having fun. I mean, again, it, it's just, uh, it, it is a, a wonderful job. It's not one that uh, it's mundane for sure. Great, thanks. Um, so then we'll go to Jen and then Eric. Um, maybe similar to Barbara, uh, when you work outside or you work with um, people <laughs> and to animals, there's um, a lot of, uh, your day is not very um, predictable, which I like. Um, I'm, I feel like I'm interrupted a lot by awesome things, but sometimes um, for folks that can be distracting, but I really enjoy that. And um, I think my job is flexible in some ways um you know because i work with schools there's a little bit of um following a school schedule so my um academic year looks a little bit more structured around the school day and during the summer my schedule is really different um from from june to uh, the beginning of September, my schedule looked really different, and I actually work a lot of longer days in the summer because that's when uh, the folks that I work with are available, and also the daylight for me up in the northeast, King, the northeast of Vermont. It's it's a lot um, longer days, and so many cool things to experience outside of sort of the typical work day. You know, so we do a lot of evening programs. Um, we start early in the morning, we might do yoga, we, um, you know, really try to, to breathe life into the full, the full day in the summer. Um, 
and I, I also, um, Tiffany knows this because she's worked with me at Shelburne Farms, but, you know, the organization, you know, when you think about where you want to be at an organization, someplace like Shelburne Farms has a lot of different enterprises. So I have some flexibility in my work, for instance, because we're a working dairy farm and we make cheese, there are times of the year when I'm helping with cheese production. So starting in November, though I would typically be teaching online because of COVID or I might be teaching in a school, um, I will be packing cheese. So there's some differences in what I get to do day to day. And I imagine whether you're working for Knowles or a university or a bike company, there's different aspects of the, of the organization that you might be able to try try out while still having you know your regular job but try different things um i've gotten to you know work with the cheese making i've gotten to go down to the dairy and help um the dairy actually like do some milking i've gotten to go to the inn and work at the kitchen um you know and i I've, I've had a couple of opportunities to work with the animals so i think when when you're looking at a career also look at the place where that career happens because there might be opportunities within this bigger organization for you to try on different different parts of the job and and that can be really cool if if that's allowed great and i think that question might be for eric i've never been a hunting guide but maybe eric has <laughs> Right, so Eric, if you want to answer that question and then also just sort of answer the question about um, flexibility and benefits that your um, position might offer you. Sure. I just put something up there as well about, um, I think for any, any kind of position or task that you're interested in, if you're like, mm, maybe I'll be interested in building these tiny little remote operated vehicles because I had a bunch of students that were doing that at a science camp that I used to run. And some kids specifically came to this camp to like build these tiny little intricate circuit board things. And then uh, halfway through some of them were like, that's not for me. I've had, I've had enough practice. Like this is not my thing. I'm more into like dissecting the fish and checking out like these other biological aspects going on. So that just a big plug for like practice. Um, I think that's a pretty common, pretty common theme in anything. Just like try it out, practice it, see if you're getting better and if you really like the process of getting better. Um, but the hunting guide, <laughs> Carter really wants to know. I haven't, um, no, I have not been a hunting guide. I have hunted, but I have not been a, a hunting guide. I don't have as many firearms safety skills as as I do uh, wilderness backpacking and rock climbing skills. Um, and then to, um, to touch on flexibility, um, and that's cool that you want to be a hunting guide, you know, lots of good opportunities for that around. Um, but uh, fishing guide, lots of good, a lot of people in the outdoors do fishing, rafting trips. Um, and I think, um, flexibility boy that would that would sure tie into like being a hunting guide or fishing guide because you know those professions you really have to be super tied to like what's going on in your environment and you have to understand where um where things are going to be where the fish are going to be um where the turkeys the deer whatever is going to be and what their behavior is going to be for me um flexibility is is huge uh in the outdoor environment because um, we might have to change our approach um, to a certain like task that we're doing. If we're trying to go summit a mountain, we might be like making our way up to that mountain and all of a sudden there's like a lightning storm and we might either have to like change our direction or just like double back and go totally back the direction that we came from. So there's a lot of um, specific points. Um, and I imagine, you know, this is the same thing for, Barbara and for Jen, the outdoors is never an environment where everything can be predicted and to ensure everybody's safety. Sometimes you have to, you know, think about your group and make decisions to, um, to keep everybody safe. And um, I think flexibility as well, for me, there's a fair amount of flexibility in my schedule. So leading expeditions and stuff outdoors is somewhat seasonal. So there's winter expeditions that um, I have never 
led many winter expeditions. I've taught cross country skiing and things like that, but there are winter expeditions taking people dog sledding or cross country skiing for weeks on end, or some people go down to Florida and teach winter expeditions doing um, canoeing down in the Everglades. Uh, but for me, I work mainly in the summer in North Carolina doing backpacking and whitewater canoeing and such. Um, and then so typically I'll have like a little break after the summer and then I'll get into some like late fall and winter work and then as well there's a little break in the spring so I kind of have that uh, flexibility in my schedule um, that's almost similar to your school schedule it's just my time off is in like the spring and the fall as opposed to like y'all's time off is in the in the summer um, so I really like that um, you know I uh, working a 40 40 hour week for me is challenging. And so I like being out in the woods for like three to four weeks at a time. And then I've got like five, six, seven days off to kind of go do whatever I, whatever I may. So I, I do really like that aspect of my schedule as well. Great. Yeah. I think, you know, as a fellow educator and someone who really likes flexibility and I, and I love change, if I were working in a field where everything was the same all the time, I would probably get bored. So I think um, this, you know, education and training, that sort of field is something where there's a lot of opportunity to do things differently. Um, and, you know, I think if that's the type of person that you are, then again, this might be a, a great pathway for you to explore a little bit further. Um, and I, you know, another thing just to point out is like when you're choosing your career pathway, um, it's really important to think about the skills and how your skills align to it, but it's also important to think about your interests. So if you have noticed, you know, Barbara, Jennifer, or Jen, and Eric have all sort of like their careers or their jobs that they, are, that they have chosen are really related to the things that they're interested in. So, um, Carter, I think for you to like to identify that you really enjoy hunting and that that might be something that you want to explore a little bit further, I think you might find a lot of happiness in choosing, you know, something that is um, of interest to you. So, you know, getting to like maybe just a, a few more specific questions that some of the students asked prior. Um, there was a question, some questions for you, Barbara, just about coaching sports professionally um, and playing sports. Um, as a career. So I'm just curious if you have, you know, any uh, feedback or any insight on what that might be like and what, what students might need to do if that's of interest to them. Sure. I mean, there, there are, you know, um, people out of Vermont for sure that has made it in the professional career. I know a friend of mine uh, who started back, uh, are we allowed to use names? Do I get into trouble? But uh, so for example, um, Stan Van Gundy, who uh, coached a couple of years at Castleton State College, uh, who I knew and I was at Johnson at the time, um, he then moved on and was an assistant for quite a few years at other schools, but he currently now is coaching in the NBA. Uh, he coached for the Magic and now he's coaching the Pelicans. Um, you know, Kevin Vogel, who's with the Lakers, he at one time coached the professional team here in Vermont. So certainly, is can it be done? Absolutely. I think any dream can be done. It may, you know, the exact path that you take, um, you know, really depends on, you know, how much effort and, and, and time and commitment that you're willing to put forth uh, to, to get up that ladder. Um, as far as playing professionally, um, absolutely. Um, you know, I was very fortunate when I first started. I, I did go to college on a basketball scholarship, but I also, when I, um, in the downtime, uh, I, I love softball. So I actually played semi-professional softball in the summer for the first couple of years. And I also played uh, basketball overseas uh, for, for a year. So, and, you know, um, yeah, so absolutely there is. Um, so ways of going about it, I, you know, I, I you know, I have mixed feelings uh, and, and opinions. I know uh, now it seems like a lot of athletics, they kind of, um, in order to succeed more so, you know, they, they limit um, play of other sports. And, and I was not a fan of that. I mean, I grew up playing, you know, field hockey, basketball, softball, did that also during, during my career. Now it seems like, you know, you need to be a part of, you know, maybe, um, 
you know, summer league AAU basketball, then from here in your school and, and not play the other sports. So again, that comes with a price of, you know, what, what you really, you know, want to do uh, in life. So this is a possibility. Absolutely. Uh, it, it's, it's a lot of work because again, there's a lot of people competing for only so many spots. So if, if you're up for the challenge, certainly it's doable, both being an athlete as well as coaching in it. Um, but uh, the exact path, you know, I don't, I can't steer you in that. Um, so yeah, uh, hopefully that, you know, keep, keep striving. If that's what you want to do. You should do it. <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. Um, and then, and there's an, you know, another specific question just to, related to um, making a difference in the community and how your job or your work could really um, help you make a difference in the community. So Jen, I'm just curious if you can sort of um, answer that question. Sure. So I think there, so I've been um, in my same job for almost 18 years. And prior to that, I had kind of, um, I had moved maybe every two to three years. And I think um, for me, why I've sort of had that staying power of the job, even though the job has slightly changed over time, is that um, there's, there's a real purpose for me related to my values. And so I think sometimes when we look at different careers, we might look at, you know, what is the schedule like or what kind of work is it? You know, do I want to be outside? Do I want to do something hands-on? And for me, um, all of the jobs that I've had have really been related to my values. And for me, that um, identification of values um, really explicitly and sort of talking about it and writing about it has been useful. So the work that I do is to improve the quality of life um, for people on the planet. And so that that can look different but i couldn't i don't think i could do a job that wasn't improving the health of the environment air quality water quality um and attending to social justice and right now um i've been thinking a lot how some of the work that i do intersects with um, racial justice and black lives matter and um the connection between the social justice movements and the environmental justice movements um so you know work around climate change and um you know farmer farm worker rights um those kinds of things are really important to me so i would encourage you to really think about your values because that that can help you figure out what kind of work you want to do or what kind of organization you want to be with um and as you you know explore different careers there's a lot of different careers that I could that I could be in that align with those values, and I just happen to have landed um, in an, in education. But I could be um, doing advocacy work, or I could be working um, in in advertising, but specifically around the social justice and environmental justice issues. So I hope I'm making the world a better place. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> um, so Eric, there was just some specific questions around um, overcoming a fear of trauma or big wounds to the body easily. So can you overcome, um, you know, a fear of trauma or big wounds to the bodily e body easily? So perhaps just talking a little bit about, you know, your wilderness medicine um, skills and, and background and what that's like. Sure, um, maybe I'll, uh take the fear question first because that seems like it's more um you know psycho psychological mental um and uh i think a lot of people i saw a question about climbing and it's sketchy and it's scary and have i fallen and uh the answer is yes many many times and i think everybody has times in their career or their chosen um path of study or as a student like it doesn't matter you're gonna like fall like metaphorically many many times along your along your journey um and you know that it's kind of natural that that makes us scared and in an outside environment where we're not practicing with like scaling a literal like vertical rock wall or paddling down a raging river where there's like scary rapids that you're terrified of um you know, uh, the 
fear of those things isn't as present, but it's, it is very present when you're outside in that kind of an environment. And what is really powerful or what I've seen be really powerful for people is just like the support of others around them to be able to lift them up. Um, and I think that applies very much to the school environment, um, to your classmates, if they're struggling with questions on a test or in a certain subject, like you can lift people up, whether it's giving them advice and support when they're struggling rock climbing or whether they're having difficulty with a, a math problem. And so I think like meeting that fear by acknowledging it and saying like, I don't wanna feel this fear anymore. And like, who do I need support from to like get past this fear is a good place to start. And then having trusted, um, you know, people that you can ask like, hey, can you be there for me when I'm struggling and try and give me some, give me some advice and help me with this. Um, so, and now moving on to like actually physical wounds or like illnesses. I mean, that totally just depends. Um, I mean, if you're generally healthy and you have a large wound on your body or a fracture or um, you know, some uh, wound that gets infected, you know, hopefully if you're generally healthy and you're young, um, you will heal from, from those types of things quickly, you know, access to good medical care is, is important or to have some like qualified people in the backcountry or the wilderness, making sure that you don't, um, get a lot of infection is important. Um, and yeah, so I guess my answer to that is just kind of like, it depends, but you should always, um, try and take care of things up to your own personal ability. And if there's anybody that knows more, utilize them and their skills. Um, and if you ever have any further questions, go ask somebody that might have more skills and abilities, such as a nurse or a doctor or an EMT. Great, thanks so much. So I think I'm just gonna ask you know one more question before we wrap up. Um, and I think for, for participants, if you think about it, like. You want your career to be something that you're interested in, that you're skilled at, that um, you find joy in, in doing. Um, and I think a lot of other people also get like, what are the benefits of the, um, the job that I have? Or you know, when you're choosing what organization you're gonna work for, you might think about what you know, benefits that organization might offer you. So if the three of you um, want to just explore a little bit, so what are the benefits of the organization that you work for, that you did work for, um, and what made you choose sort of that, that organization or place to, to work for? And maybe we'll just start with Jen real quick and then go to Barbara and Eric before we wrap. Yeah, so there's a few things that come to mind. One um, of the benefits for me was working in a beautiful place. Um, so the, the landscape was important. Um, being near to my home was also important. I knew I didn't want to have a long commute. So that was important. Um, and I had tried living. Um, I worked on a farm in Italy and lived like 100 feet from my, my quote unquote office in the field. And um, I didn't love that. I wanted that separation from work. So that was something helpful for me to know. Um, and so, so the benefit of being in a beautiful place, being able to get outside um, or to work outside, um, to have, like I said earlier, to have the work aligned with my values, um, that was a benefit. And then there's some really funny um, benefits that I have at Shelburne Farms that, you know, you might look for um, when you're when you're interviewing for jobs or you're considering careers. Um, I get a farm benefit. I get fresh produce from the farm. I get cheese, um, and I have I think a benefit of working with folks um, that are are really joyful to be around and have shared values. So I'm part of a community. It kind of feels like a family, and that's another reason why I've probably stayed there so long. And I think one of the things that I identified really early on working in nonprofits and, and in education was that I was never gonna make a ton of money. So some of those other benefits of community and place and sort of the non-monetary benefits um, have been more important to me. So, you know, I would say some of those things outweighed the salary um, over time. Uh, 
Uh, for me, I would say um, really wanting to uh, give back to Vermont, being a native Vermonter, so I uh, chose uh, to, to stay in Vermont. Um, being the job enables me for a tremendous amount of engagement um, at, at, at all levels. Um, I, I think some of the uniqueness is, is just being a part of the process, you know, having a student come in uh, at the beginning, kind of that deer in headlights, since we've been talking a lot about deers and I see the eight pointer that someone got. Um, but seeing when students come in and, and you know, not sure about the direction and going through the college process so really being a part of that too by the time that you see the light switch come on and really see the student grow just being able to be a part of that you know oftentimes maybe just sometimes whether it be in the athletics or just having the the office door open the flexibility uh, of that uh, of being an athletic director you, you certainly uh, have some of that for as far as the engagement uh, around the campus so yeah, it, 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 again, it's, it, it, if you just, um, probably for myself, I didn't, uh, I like juggling a lot of things at once. It keeps me entertained. So a, a job like being an athletic director certainly suits that because you can have the administrative piece, but you can have the fun piece. You can have the uh, physical fitness piece of it, but you also have the exploration part of it um being a, a role model role model part of it in that so it's a it's a great career path uh, if if you are a person that likes to juggle um and have a new experience every day go for it <laughs> great and barbara as somebody who works at a university i know that like professors can get tenure which is a great benefit um, in your role, were you were there any benefits like tenure or things like that 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 really um, inspired you to work for a university? Uh, well, when I chose a job, I, I was not looking into that and didn't know about that. But um, positions like uh, myself in that, it, it's not like faculty where they're unions and, and they have that tenure opportunity. Ours was a, a year to year basis in doing it, but part of uh, in the Vermont State College system, they had the time when I was there, um, you know, they had some certain levels. So if you had 20 plus years, for example, they had lifetime benefits uh, or, or in such. So, yeah, so in some ways, yes, but not guarantees. It, it, it kind of shifted depending on where the VSC was. Uh, for me, though, I, I will say it, it became a, a great benefit. Um, I, I had put in enough years, so I do have lifetime benefits uh, through that. Um, and again, as Jen had said, it, it, um, the salary was not great uh, for sure, but there are the other pieces that made the, it priceless when it came down to what did I really make. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's, it's, it has some benefits. It's changing uh, from when I was there now, as we know, with the VSC system and that, but um, it, it does have some benefits uh, for you as well. Yep. Great. And I realize we're, we're sort of at time, but Eric, if you have anything you wanted to offer before we, um, before we wrap up. Uh, travel, good community, fun, having intentional, reflective experiences, active, constantly learning new skills. That was a great summary. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you guys so much. Um, it's been a pleasure to hear your stories and to learn a little bit more about your career pathways and um, in your field. So I'm going to stop recording now.